<laughs> because we I are don't live. there's the live thing. There it is. All right, we are live. I <laughs> am Patrick Hillier, and I'm temping as Bill Corey, the Cubist. <laughs> Bill is stuck in another snowstorm. And I have with me usual Cubist guest chair, Kimberly Reviet. Hello. And Welcome. our guest tonight that we're grilling. Uh, unintended. Yeah. <laughs> Rob Davio. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. My first podcast of the year, I believe. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Wow. So so Rob Rob's here because he is dressed up in a in a chef's apparel because um I know that I know Rob from Twitter like talks about cooking. And uh, I'm a big fan of following Rob's tweets about cooking. And I'm a I'm a cook too. I'm a home chef. I do I'm the primary um, cook for our home. I cook all of our meals, most of our meals. My wife cooks a few. And so I, you know, we, I chat about things like that on Twitter, but most, most of my food stuff's on Instagram. But anyway, so I think Kimberly came up with the brainstorm, right? Of, of Valentine's coming so. up and, um, maybe we'll have a nice meal, play a game mm -hmm. with our, with our significant other. Out. And it's kind of a side <laughs> theme right here. What? Yeah. Yeah. I just sneezed right before we went live. <laughs> And I guess I'm I give it to you. you. Okay. Like, Every while having our allergies. Let's get it over with. You're like a hundred miles away, and I still made you sneeze. Yep. Sorry. Okay. So, so while they're all sneezing, we'll talk about game uh, games that we we've played recently in our usual usual cubist manner. I will start because I just had a huge game day. Uh, I'm going to talk about Lighthouse Run. So Jim Harmon is a local designer to us. And I've seen this game in development over the last, I don't know, three to 10 years. Um, you know how that goes, right, Rob? So how you, you'll, you'll, they take forever to actually come from a prototype and then you give it to a publisher and then a couple of years later, you might see it as a, as an actual. Uh, yeah. Finish. Sometimes it's months, sometimes it's years. It's, it's, yeah. I, I usually have a pretty good sense of when they're coming out and base the right. schedule around it, but it, yeah, it, it does shift. Right. Well, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, guessing here i've just yeah. i've always i always see it i go to events and jim's got jim's sitting over there at the other table and he's demoing it to people all the time it just seems like and it just it just keeps changing and this time it was the the box you know bill had the box it was the finished product it was like oh this is cool um and all of a sudden the lighthouses were smaller he used to have like these giant lighthouses that like he had lights on top of them and the final printed final version uh. or a little the little yeah. cardboard things and yeah yeah anyway, cost, cost is a real thing and funny yeah. yeah so it's it's a uh, it's kind of a light racing game so you start off with three or four of your own colored um ships at the end of this long river and there's four lighthouses on it and you have cards that say at there there are two parts the top half is like maybe lighting up one of the lighthouses and the bottom half is moving either one of your ships or a group of the ships and the problem is you can't move ships unless one of the lighthouses in your path is lit up. And only three of the lighthouses of the six along the path can be lit up at a time. So you're using the top half of the card to move the lights to power up one of the lighthouses before, you know, and then you can move some of the ships. So it's kind of this first, make sure you get the area lit up that you need to move and then maybe move some of your ships. And the cards either move, you know, a grouping of ships, like everyone's ships that are in a grouping or just your ships. So there's this kind of push pull of, you know, uh, I'm going to move everyone's ships and maybe get a little bit of a little bit of a push out of that. Or I'm going to move one of my ships a whole bunch of ways. And um, there's this uh, uh, turn order thing where this uh, every time in the card, every time they go around the table, this cloud comes up and eats up the, the ships that haven't moved. And that's the triggers the end game so it's a cute little game um you know it's a little bit geared towards a younger crowd but like i said it's just been fun to see it develop over the years and finally play the the finished copy and it was a fun race game that's cool so anyway, that's a lighthouse run, run lighthouse run by jim Harmon, and i think amigo was well, put out the final copy so in the in the cubist scale of uh buy it play it forget <laughs> it or burn it <laughs> i would give this a play it for sure give it a play it I like it. I enjoy a good racing game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. Think that it auto tweeted. By the way, Patrick, you might have to force tweet. Force tweet what? The show link. 
Okay. I think attendance is partially low because it didn't push the auto thing, and I don't know how to do any of that, and I'm so sorry. We're so sorry, Rob. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, one of you talk, and I won't uh, say I, it while I, uh, I the show. I'm one of those people who, I, what you, when I hear about playing games for a long time, I'm like, well, that sounds so nice. I get to go with the friends twice a year, and we have these big, long four or five day gaming weekends. Other than that, it's mostly playing my own stuff or prototyping, which I don't do out of egotistical desire to keep playing my own stuff. But it, play testing is a thing. Um, but you we had some the fact that you play test your games, Rob. Very uh, very much. You know, some people say I don't, but most people agree that I, I do. Uh, I um, I played Chronicles of Crime last weekend, though. Uh, not just yesterday, but before that. Um, I had played Detective over the summer and really enjoyed it. Um, and then I wanted to play Chronicles of Crime because I heard they're kind of like companion. They do similar things. I thought Chronicles was interesting. You, uh, you have some crime scenes. What's interesting is everything is app-driven. And you've got an app and you look through it and the, the, the sort of the heart of it or the, the cool part that I think people will talk about is sometimes you get to a scene and you put your phone up to your face and you look around and you s try to describe to the other players what you see there. And what, and what kind of thing are you seeing? You're actually in like a virtual reality room where you can look up and you can look down and you can turn around and it's pretty, it's pretty cool how it works. They got a little clip you put on your phone, which gives you glasses. You can do it as, a, as like a 3D effect or without the 3D effect. So you're like in a room, like you got dropped into a video game. You know, oh, we're in a parlor. I see some papers that are spilled over. There's a half eaten piece of cake. Uh, okay. There's a cat over there. And as you're saying it, people are taking clue cards, almost like a party game, but in a more general sense, like animals, yeah. because you mentioned cat and food, because you mentioned something and they all have QR codes. And then you can follow up with the phone and say, I want to know more about the food. <laughs> and if, the cake is relevant, it knows, okay, the only food in the room is cake. So we must be talking about the cake. And it will then say, oh yes, the cake, you know, you can send it to the lab or you could do this and you can learn different things. And every turn you take, takes some time. And when you go to a new location, it takes some time and you're supposed to do it within a fixed amount of time. So you're taking cards on and off the board and it's telling you to get new cards from the deck and you're putting them out for new suspects or new witnesses. And it's cool because it, also works in real time. You know, you can talk to someone in the morning and then they could show up as a corpse in the afternoon, which means you can't really talk to them again. <laughs> um, I, I ended up playing a, a solo one. Uh, it was like the curse of the mummy. It was a standalone. And I found it a little easy. And then I discovered later, in fact, it's an easy case, which is why I found it easy. So um, <laughs> detective was a real brain burner. And I was hoping for something at that level where I really had to, to chew into it. So I'm, I'm going to play again and I'm going to sort of move it up to uh, try to find one of the harder cases just to uh, scratch that itch. Cause I'm a big sort of puzzle detective mystery kind of guy. Do you do any of the other escape room type of games? I do. I do. I do the exit series quite a bit. And how do these compare as far as this enjoyment? is less puzzly. I mean that the puzzle room games are for the most part puzzles with a light theme on them. I mean, mm -hmm. I kind of almost forget the theme by the end. Um, and it's just an escape room and I love them for that. And this doesn't have puzzles in that sense. It's much more of a mystery like, wait, that person said this, but they couldn't have said that because they were over here and that seems suspicious. And you have to put together like a procedural, a yeah. little story of what you thought happened. So you're asking the right questions, to the right people and sending the right things to the lab. Nice. Um, this feels a little bit, it's like a little bit of a mystery, but it reminds me of a point and click adventure. That's what one of my friends said. Like if you're on there where you're like, oh, that seems interesting. I want to click on it. And that seems interesting. And I want to talk to that person, but you're sort of immersed in it. It puts some guardrails up. Detective can feels much more open-ended, which some people like and some people dislike. This feels like it's put some, put some parameters on so you can't wander off the path too much. Yeah. So uh, in the cubist scale of buy it, play it, forget it, or burn it, what would you... I would say play it, um, but uh, I, oh, after only one one case, I can't you know yeah no, that's really okay. give it a thorough review. But I'm I'm gonna play it again. I've got a shelf downstairs of what after I play something is keep it to keep playing it or oh, put good. it on the to go shelf and it's to keep playing it. That's good. And then sometimes stuff goes on the to go shelf because like okay, I played that thirty times over four years and I've gotten mm -hmm. all I need out of it and I have a small house and it's time to move on. Great. So. Oh, Crystal Pisano's in the room. I don't think she's ever been here before, has she? Hi, Crystal. Oh, yeah, I think she has. Okay. <laughs> 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 All 
<laughs> All right. Uh, Kimberly, what'd you have up? Let's see. Yes. This is always, I don't, you're probably not so familiar with this, Rob. This is where I do very poorly. <laughs> okay. I don't Spank, really Saying what me. you did? Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, to, to try, describing a game is the thing. Uh, I'm I about to say, because you, you were there for. I was there. <laughs> so. Wasn't it? Yes. Okay. So we had our Granite Game Summit punching party this weekend, and we punched games, and then we played games like reasonable human beings in a library full of games. I'm reading directly from the BGG on my phone, as I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I will talk about Rococo, which I love. It's uh, Matthias Kramer, Stefan Malls, and Louis Malls. Oh, <laughs> Bill just got home, sorry. Uh, and published by Egert Spiele. Let's see, what kind of a game does it say it is? Economic, area control, card drafting. Yeah, you're making fancy dresses. So it's the perfect, we do, you know, you know, Patrick, we do Fancy Friday. So it is a really good Fancy Friday game. And I wanted to make sure that Maho knew how to play it before Fancy Friday because... Oh, it's not pronounced Maho? No, Maho, <laughs> because I am not good at teaching games when I am running a convention. So <laughs> yes. I need to learn how to play this. I keep hearing such great things about this game. It is I've such a good game. It. It's on your turn. You can do a variety of things uh, with different cards. You can either, it, it definitely is hand management. You have like a set deck of cards that you can choose any of them from, but they're different workers who can do different things so like your peasant level worker can't hire people or make dresses but then there's like a dressmaker one who can make the dresses and can do pretty much everything and then there's a fancy one yeah i don't remember what the fancy guy's called <laughs> Let's just call him lord fancy <laughs> we'll call him lord fancy he can do all the things so he can hire workers, he can make dresses, he can sell dresses, he can buy materials to make the dresses. And then there's the area control bit because there's different halls that you're putting the dresses into and that each has a certain amount of spaces. So you're fighting for an, the area control aspect of each hall, scores victory points at the end, by who has the most, and there's decorations that you can add and stuff. It's a lovely, Pleasant game, probably about a 90 minute playtime for most situations. Um, I think it might be out of print. Yeah. I think yeah, maybe. which is unfortunate because it doesn't look like it's- Either that or the expansion. The Amazon listing is $170 currently. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For me, this is, is a buy it, but you know. Okay, with a buy My kind of game, but it's perfect for any event you go to with a fancy Friday. Where so you it'll it'll look. be there. It'll be a Granite Game Summit. Yeah, yeah. That was, I think, the first game in our first wave of library donations that we ever ever got pre Granite Game Summit. It was the first thing that we took out of the the boxes that had been donated to us that I was like, yes, because <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it was like, all right, I'd play that maybe, or this one's fun, or what is that? But that one, I was like, I don't own this one, and it's so good. Awesome. So I'm always excited. So play it if you get the opportunity to play it, I guess, because it's apparently out of print again. Okay. So that's good to hear. So so speaking of Granite Game Summit. Yeah. Like who, all, who all in this chat room is going to be at Granite Game Summit? In the chat room? No, I meant in the... In the in you the, mean of the three of us? The three of us. Well, definitely you and I. We're trying to make sure Rob can come up for I have it on my I have it on my calendar to drive out for the day on Saturday. But okay. now that I hear that Friday is fancy, I'm like... Mm -hmm. Friday is what, fancy. what exactly do you mean by fancy? You dress up in your fanciest Rococo outfit. Yeah, we dress up fancy. We oh, have a, that's hard for me to one miss. Attendee that does. Isn't Saturday pajama Saturday? Saturday night is onesie night. Yeah. Onesie night. Okay. I can. I will, I, will, I will be gone by then. Okay. <laughs> Saturday that, night. That, is that, is, that you just made that decision easier for me. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to come up and be fancy with us on Friday. We All have right. one attendee who wears full tux and tails. It's amazing. Very nice. Yes. Oh, that was the guy's name. Like, he played. Yeah. Uh, he played. Uh, he played. Um, he played Eclipse, Eclipse with, with us. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was awkward. That was. Why was that awkward? No, it wasn't awkward. It was. It's just that was all of us knew each other. Oh. And for those who don't play games with me, right? Uh, I can. I can be a little awkward at times, and. Um, I suddenly realized there's this total stranger sitting here playing with the clips with us after three hours and we're, 
we're being a little loud and and cursing at each other, and I'm calling Bill's girlfriend names, and, <laughs> and I finally turned to him and okay. I said, I said, you know what? We all know each other, and we're all good <laughs> I'm friends. So sorry about this, sir. Probably yeah. had figured that out. Maybe he did. Yeah. And and hopefully we're not making you uncomfortable here. No, he left I had it. To, I had to apologize to him for a second. <laughs> <laughs> he told me about it when I met him at a different event last year. He was like, okay. oh, I know you from Granite Game Summit. And I was like, you do look familiar. And he said, I'm sure that you'll remember me now. Tucks with tails. And I was yes. like, oh, my God, yes. <laughs> great. No, we, we had fun. We seemed yeah. to have all, all that a good time. No, he's sweet, and he's come back, so you didn't scare him. Okay, good. Really? Yeah, everything's good. So right. it's on my it's on my list of things to try to get to. We'll see. We're uh, going to do our best to lure Rob up. And I will do my best to attend. Yeah. All right. It's so about we have, a two hour drive, I think, hour and a half, hour and something like that. Yeah, something like that. It's not too yeah. terrible. All right. So there's there's another holiday coming up mm -hmm. this week. What do, what do we all have planned for that? Anyone do anything cool? No. No? Well, um, what, would you, what would you do if you could do something? Would you play a game? Would you, yeah. would you make a fancy meal? Maybe I'll play a transition game. here into. Into the you want to play again? You want to play me? Oh, this holiday! Oh my gosh, I completely forgot. What are you thinking? St. Patrick's Day? Like, wait, <laughs> where were you? President's Day. Is that, it President's that's Day the worst day? holiday <laughs> ever. That's not a hub. All you have to do is to go into any CVS right now, and you will know from the decorations <laughs> it is almost the Fourth of July because that's probably what they have up right now. And then it's counting good. back, you realize it's Valentine's Day. It's actually Valentine's Day, which I can't believe that you just tried to transition and I bombed it. Yeah. You know we talked about ahead of time that this was the theme of the show, right? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, well, you, like, what were you thinking? We're going to start talking about like who's on what currency? Yes. <laughs> 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 it's been a long day. Okay. Yeah, no, it has. Oh boy! So Valentine's Day. <laughs> My eyes were already watery because I'm sick. <laughs> Just the excuses are flying. Okay. Yes, Valentine's Day is Thursday. <laughs> yes. I was going to cue in the people watching, but also you. Yeah. My, also the, also the the host might need some. As I would well. like a cue card next time, please. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Valentine's Day is Thursday. <laughs> Valentine's Day. And we're going to have a date night in, which is why we have this lovely themed episode. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll start off. I asked my wife, what are some of the games that she likes to play with me? And I'll I'll admit, you know, I don't want to be a stereotype here, but I'm the I'm the, the bigger gamer in our household and and she she plays games with me. And I asked her some of our favorite games. One of them is Quicks, which is sitting right here. I like that game. Uh, this is great because this is like a purse game. Um, this isn't actually in here. It's it's in a bag. <laughs> and oh, it travels okay. with us. And we take it out to restaurants. So, like, we're actually going to a fondue place Ooh. on Thursday. And it's, a, it's nice. one of our favorite games to play at a table at a restaurant while we're waiting for service to happen. I know, it, you know it's a dice game, but it's... Little dice and I think roll and rights are perfect for yeah out and yeah. about coffee mm -hmm. dates mm -hmm. like small abstracts and roll and rights. Sure, I usually yeah. bring War of the Ring with my wife and we just oh, good. yeah set that up. Let's go full on. Yeah, yeah full on. <laughs> We're gonna need a six top here yeah. if you don't mind <laughs> in three hours. Yeah, that usually works on a busy yeah. holiday. Too, yeah, right? yeah, two salads <laughs> and we're just gonna keep the water just coming. Coffee. Just yeah. water. Yeah. Water. <laughs> Please don't make me spit take my tea. <laughs> okay. Now it's a goal. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> I need the tea to live. Uh yeah. I I your your night sounds very nice. Um the, my wife and I are probably not gonna do anything like a date night because mm -hmm. she is the production person for restoration games and it's her job to send all the final <laughs> files to the manufacturer so that they arrive in Gen Con on the holidays. And that date is Friday. Oh, geez. <laughs> so it is 1020 at night and she is right there working right now. Yeah, she's waving. Um, so I will make her dinner while she works and be like, go, go, you can do this. That's mm -hmm. good though. Yeah, no, it is very good. So I will, um, 
I, I actually have a phone call at six at night, like uh, for a kickoff or a project. And then when that's done, I will make probably risotto is my guess. Risotto. I'm no yes. good at risotto. So good risotto for you. is good. That's that's what I brought for tonight's topic of like something really forgiving and easy, I think, to make that you get a, you can get a lot of credit for and very flexible. So if you're watching, you're like, I don't know what to cook. I'd like to cook for a date. We can talk risotto. Let's good. do it. Let's talk risotto. Risotto. Patrick, Patrick, why don't why don't you uh, why you're not good at risotto? Because I find it very forgiving. <laughs> doesn't doesn't um well doesn't it require special rice like arborito? Yeah, arborio Mr. rice. You could make it with regular rice, but it's it's traditionally made with arborio rice. Thank which, you, right? Which, which is, is a medium a medium. Here? It's a medium grain rice. It's got yeah. starch. It's kind of starchy, and then and then are you supposed to use Warm water, warm stock or cold? Warm. warm, warm. Yeah, and then you just add it, and then you stir it. And cook yeah, it, all right. right. Well, let me let's mine's get into it. Like, then. Mine's always like chewy. I think that's my problem. Cook it longer. Yeah, you are you like not cooking it up? So for those of you I who like don't, that. let's start with the way. Those of you who do not know what risotto is, yes, it is a northern Italian rice dish, which is sort of like a rice porridge. I like to think of it. So mm -hmm. right, it's not just a plate of dry rice, and it's not a soup. It's somewhere in between. It's a rice that's in a sauce, and that sauce is made mostly from the own the starch on the rice itself comes off as you're cooking it and thickens the like stock that you're cooking. And so rather than boiling water and then putting rice in and closing the top and walking right and it absorbs the water, you do like a slow cook to it. And you're basically sort of dissolving the starch from the rice into the liquid that you're cooking. And what I like is if you know just a few templates, you can kind of go any different direction with it. And it's usually pretty forgiving. And then when you put it on a plate, you just put a couple things on top, like you shave some Parmesan on it. It looks a lot fancier than it really was, which is mm -hmm. a peasant dish from Italy. <laughs> Those are the best. Yeah. Um, and I particularly like it because it almost always involves wine at the beginning. So you are required to Did open a bottle of wine yeah. and then to be at the stove stirring for half an hour with an open bottle of wine next to you. <laughs> so like you are just required to sit and have a glass of wine or two for work while you're cooking. Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah. So I particularly enjoy it. So <laughs> I'll look in the chat. If anyone's interested in actually learning more about risotto, we can get into it. But if you're here for the games, no, no, we can sure. talk about the games. What? What's even a game? I've never heard of these games you speak of, sir. <laughs> Bo you mean like Monopoly? Yeah, I think so, maybe. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot to grab Monopoly. <laughs> I have, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have, yes, for no, no, really, all my really, games back there, but I... No, I no, I have work. the other Monopoly, the, the Monopoly... Um, Tropical Tycoon? Tropical Ty Tycoon. I, was I, I will still oh. stand behind that game as, yes. a, as a good game. Yes, no, I had that on my list. <laughs> okay, we're looking at this uh, risotto is just rice. Gordon Ramsay yelling about the risotto. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give the one minute Better. tutorial of how to make risotto. Okay. Do it, and we'll kind of do the tradition Italian Parmesan risotto. You just chop up some onions and some garlic, pretty fine. Put, and then you melt in a big heavy pot either olive oil or butter, because at that part of Italy, either one is fair game as a fat that they use. And use more than you think, because you're making a holiday yeah. dinner. If you ever go out to a restaurant and you say, oh, that's really good, you'd be horrified slash delighted to know how much <laughs> butter is in it. So if oh, you're yeah. making something nice, <laughs> do it. I mean, don't do it every morning on your toast, right? Don't put yeah. like two tape, but put, put some decent amount in there. Turn it on over a medium low heat. Put some onions in. You don't have to put the garlic in yet. You can, if you have enough fat and it's a low heat, you're not going to burn the garlic. And you're doing something called sweating it, which is it sort of releases its liquid into the pan. You don't want to get it brown. You don't want to like cook it for 40 minutes. Just leave it there for 15 minutes stirring. Then you take some arborio rice. You could probably use another type of rice, but I'd recommend taking the time to get arborio and you put, yeah, it's worth it. see, I never use, I'm going to say you put a cup, cup and a half of dry rice in. Don't rinse it. A lot of rice you would rinse, but you want the starch that's on this rice going into the pan, not down the drain. So don't rinse it. And you put it in, you stir it in the fat for like a minute and that coats it. Then you put in about a cup of uh, dry white wine. Don't use a dessert wine. Mm -hmm. And you stir that. And then the rice is going to start looking for liquid because that's what rice does. So it absorbs the liquid of the wine, which gives it some flavor right off the bat. 
Meanwhile, you've brought just a second pot of chicken stock up to a simmer. And when the rice has absorbed all the wine, you put a couple ladlefuls or a cup of stock in and you stir it until it absorbs that. And you just keep doing that until it's done. And then you've made risotto. Um, at the end, you can throw in a bunch of Parmesan cheese and that's nice. You can put like a chicken breast on top and that's good. And if you don't want to make chicken breast because you don't cook, just buy one from the store and chop it up. Uh, and then if you want to get really fancy, you put some shaved Parmesan curls up top and some pea tendrils. Then you're fancy. Ooh. Or, you can put some, or if it's a little early for asparagus, you could put some asparagus on top. You could put some peas on top. Mm -hmm. You could put some bacon in it. My wife likes the mushroom. You could put mushroom. Yeah. I mean, you can go in a different direction. So yeah. you take everything I said and you just, um, you go red wine instead of white wine and you do a beef stock and you do mushrooms and now you'll get, it's a little bit of a, a strange color because it's like a purpley brown color from the red mm -hmm. wine, but you get this really heavy red wine, mushroomy beef flavor as opposed to the brighter Parmesan chicken flavor. And you just play around with it. You know, the worst that's going to happen is if you overcook it, it's going to be a little mushy. If you don't have enough liquid, it's going to be a little dry. You put in too much liquid, it's going to be soupy, but it's basically all good. I think I think my issue is that <clears throat> I'm worried about it being too liquidy, and I probably don't put enough liquid in it. Yeah. Just do and like then, a little bit at a time is always what I do, like a small quantity of liquid at a time and stir it in. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I described is the traditional way to make risotto, and there's a lot of modern cookbooks that say that's what Italian grandmothers use, and you can put in like <laughs> half the liquid at the beginning, and you can do this, and you can do this, and all these things. Like, that's fine, but... The traditional way is sort of really simple to do when you're doing your first one. Yeah. So you can kind of go with it. And if you're like, oh, I didn't put enough chicken stock on, I'm running out, just get some hot water from the sink. Like, you yeah. be okay. Right? Just food, uh, cooking's a lot more forgiving than I think people think it is. Yeah. Even, bake, even baking yes. is a lot more forgiving than people think. The, the difference baking is less forgiving than cooking, I think. The other thing about baking is once it goes in the oven, you really can't fix it. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas when you're cooking, you can usually fix stuff right to the last minute. Like you can taste your risotto and go, oh, it's not done. Okay, keep cooking it. Oh, it's not salty enough. Add salt. But the right. thing about baking is you kind of like have to make it, but you can't really taste it because it's not cooked and then guess. Yeah. <laughs> you put it a in. A couple of good pie. questions for you there, Rob. All right. What do we got here? Real butter versus margarine and Instapots. Oh, my gosh. Real butter. I'm, yes. Yeah. Real <laughs> butter. Uh, I don't think I've used margarine a while but you know what margarine is just vegetable oil right it's the same right. thing it won't be as good as all the flavor of olive oil or butter but you know if it's all you got in the house give it a try i've cooked i do it in bacon fat sometimes i make bacon i save the fat and then i just pour mm. bacon fat and butter is about the same amount of saturated fat and cholesterol so if you're willing to use one the other is pretty much uh just as good now Chicken broths can be salty. So if you use a regular chicken broth, don't add any extra salt. If you use low sodium chicken broth, you can add some salt. So uh, I have instant made pot. risotto in an instant pot. Instant pot. Uh, really? I don't have the recipe like sort of, hmm. you know, on hand, but the, here's the nice thing. If you're doing this for a date night and especially if you don't usually cook and they see you at a stove for half an hour, that's true. After you've chopped some onions and done some stuff, like you're really putting your all into this dish <laughs> and you get a lot of credit. And you, what you, you don't tell them is I'm drinking wine and stirring. Um, <laughs> whereas if you put it in the Instant Pot and the Instant Pot's doing it, then you, you don't get as much credit. Um, right. So it's, it's, so I think, a I don't know bit, if, it's a little bit of a date night thing there. Right. I think, I don't know if this was before the show or, or you mentioned it while we were on the air or not, but the whole point of this is it doesn't matter if you screw it up doesn't matter you know just the fact that you're putting forth the effort right that yeah you're, you're making yeah, I mean, a special meal for your date right and wow. here's here's the thing get the biggest plate you have and put a tiny amount in the middle it looks so fancy <laughs> that looks like a fancy restaurant right, right? And then take like one green thing from your fridge and put it on the edge and then take like, <laughs> the other thing and put like two of them on the edge and then put it down in the middle and honestly your food will just elevate Yes. <laughs> tremendously and people what did you do <laughs> you can get fancy you can just take like just take something like i put maple syrup and i made a smear i hope yeah. they don't taste it it doesn't <laughs> go at all they, with this recipe don't, don't those things. yeah <laughs> but you know if you just kind of play around with how it looks you just everything you get so much credit then i stirred rice that is awesome but you stirred rice thoroughly and for a long period of time in a long period of time but yeah so you do your aromatics your onion and your garlic Yet you add some wine and then you add stock and you just stir it the whole time. And then it kind of makes like a nice thick, 
delicious, very comforting winter dish. Yes, that is awesome. I agree. I think that risotto might be on our Valentine's Day menu. So. Cool. I know the boy got nice steaks, but he needs a side. That's what I suggested. Risotto. Yeah. Well, you can do both. Yeah. I mean, risottos could largely be a vegetarian entree or side dish to mm -hmm. a protein, but I'm not going to spend the entire time talking no. about cooking. I just wanted to bust <laughs> out the risotto story. All right. What game do you think pairs well for a date night in? What are your favorite date night in type games or date night out? Like Patrick mentioned, you can bring quicks with him to a restaurant. Roland rights are pretty perfect for that. Um, Try to think. Usually because my wife and I work together and we work eight to 10 hours a day when we go out, we're not looking for a game night. That's reasonable. Yeah. Right. We did bring a game to a restaurant the other night, and it's a game we're putting out for restoration so we could proof it. <laughs> <laughs> so we were looking at the cards. You guys are so romantic. Are we so oh, romantic? Oh, gosh. It's crunch time here. It's crunch time. <laughs> but it's not the one. It's not It's not conspiracy, is it? It's not conspiracy. It's oh, so you can't talk about it. It hasn't been announced yet. It's not been announced. I'm just was trying to see if we could talk about it. I'm... I'm <laughs> I'll come back on the show when it's been announced. Okay. Can we talk okay. about conspiracy? What, yeah. What's the story with that? Uh, well, conspiracy is a game that Restoration is bringing back. It will be out probably at Origins. We said Origins. Um, it'll be Origins or Gen Con sometime in that time period. And it's, as yeah. you can see from the box, it was a game in the 70s that had like an interesting hook that still holds up. Mm -hmm. which is there are there's a briefcase in the middle board and there's a bunch of spies around it and no player controls any one spy but on your turn you can move any spy and if, and if the spies on the space of the briefcase they can move with them and the goal is to get the spy back to your headquarters and the thing that makes it interesting is during the game you can put various amounts of money monies we'll just say one money various amounts of money on the different spies you have a little screen and you're putting money behind there so if, Patrick, you go to move a spy, I might be like, eh, eh, hold on. And then we get in a little bidding war. It's not even a bidding war. It's like a little who has more money on that person. Yeah. And if you have more money, you can do what you said. If I have more money, I stop you from doing it. And I'm and so there's a lot of bluffing. You might say, okay, okay, you have more money than me. I'm not moving him, even though you do have more money. So I th think that I have more money. And then later on when it counts, you really do. And so there's this whole, when do you put money down? And who is really in control of these spies and you can as basically assassinate spies like, okay, Patrick's got a ton of money on spy, you know, a, and then yeah. we Kimberly and I team up and we assassinate spy a. So you've, oh, yeah. you've lost all your investment on that. Um, it takes about 25 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. It's a little tug of war. And then you figure out who's, which spies you really have the advantage on. And then you try to make a run for it. That's how the game played. We've made some tweaks being restoration sure. games. I think the thing I thought was the funnest about it were these the spies were all two-faced liars. So Yeah, we <laughs> moved away from that. We do have two-faced <laughs> pieces, which I do not think are in the house. Okay. Um what's that? Do you want them? Yeah, we do have them in the house. Okay. So um I'm in the brain, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh you're gonna be on camera when you walk by. <laughs> I'm all geared up. Woo! So she, she says, Oh, yeah. Get the restoration. Oh, there she goes. Yeah. Um, so we redid the pieces. We gave the spies a power. We reduced the number of them. Mm -hmm. And we also put a timer in the game, which if there's basically Dr. Solomon is sort of the man off stage, And if no one gets the briefcase within a certain amount of time, there's a chance every turn that he gets it and wins. And so you might want to put some money on him on the side. Like if the game's going on, you're like, uh-oh. I don't think anyone's going to win the traditional way, so I'm going to start betting on an alternate win condition. So nice. So here they are. Here's one of our spy spy glass. Oh, so Ooh, it's a big, fancy. thick, chunky oh, plastic fancy. piece, mm -hmm. right? And it's got two sides, and then they've got they each have a little power, which is in the side. Oh, that's cool. So after she moves, like she art. she can move any one spy away from her, which is the little like arrow away, as opposed to roulette who can move us uh, the briefcase towards her. Oh, I love those graphics. Uh, yeah. yeah, we have these great talented uh, graphic designers and artists. There's Vagabond. Can't really, we lost your image. Yeah, sorry. So, okay. And um, we're doing like a early 70s spy theme. So like the whole look is like mm -hmm. 1974 yeah. spy vibe. 
we gave right. the characters new name. They had names that were sort of puns that were fun, but then half of them were kind of like vaguely racist puns. Oh no! Yeah, they were, they, the original <laughs> which were less pretty, pretty less bad. fun. Yeah. So we decided no, that's terrible. That they all died or were burned, and where there's a that's whole new call. bit of spies in there. Yeah. yeah. Good. good call on that one. Thank so. you. Oh, Josh is here. Hey, Josh. Uh, I like Josh's question. What would your spy name be, Rob? Uh, the chef. <laughs> nice. So, and um, so we have that coming out. We're excited about that. We like we like I said, we kind of streamlined, simplified a few things, and put an end game because it's a type of game that the first time you play, which makes it different from a lot of modern games, you might lose and go, "What just happened?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's a type of game that you have to play a couple times to get to kind of see how it moves, which is hard in a world of oh, I already played that once. What's next? Yeah. Right. Right. True. Oh so, my goodness! I don't think I've played it since 1975 or eight or so. So that was I've played it at a very young age. Or you're? I'm old. I'm going to be 50 next March. Okay, I'm going to be 50 next Wait. April. Well, yeah. Hey, happy birthday! Thank you. You guys, me 19. I mean 19. Oh my goodness! <laughs> 2019 or 2020? 2020. 2020. <laughs> I was born in 70. I was born in 79. Okay, so oh, this right. March. You'll be next, March. next I'm March. March. I'm, I'm a year from April. <laughs> yeah. I'm right I mean, after Granite Game Summit. Okay. Yeah. Happy birthday, Patrick. Thanks. I mean, you're St. Patrick's Day. Yes, I am. I know. That's what I was teasing earlier about. Yeah. Right. Kimberly, did you mention a, a game? I don't know. Did game? I? A date oh. game? <laughs> Oh, I think date night in games. I personally, I really like to go with the puzzle, like a work together puzzly thing. I'm not a big co-op person okay. at all. I'm very competitive by nature. Uh, but I think that for a nice romantic, especially date night in, a nice work together exit room or unlock or- Yeah, somebody else maybe, mentioned or exit room, I think. Experiment. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that I on, think the, those uh, on the chat. That's why I kind of keep- Looking over there. Yeah. Actually, now that you mentioned it, Lindsay and I did go out and we did do a uh, an exit room at a restaurant once. That was our mm -hmm. our game. It's yeah. a good. They're they're good because you work together and you know that they have a general time length, right? Like, it yeah. might take you more than an hour, but it's not going to take you much more than an hour generally. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it's an activity that you can do together. Yeah, it's an hour. It's not too stressful generally. If you need hints, take hints. They, I think they're good. Cool. They're yeah. for, for date mates. So. Uh, uh, Troy, who's joining the show, he's managed to stay awake tonight, mentioned uh, Sherlock yeah. Holmes Consulting Detective, which is another ancient old game. I have like the 87 version. Uh, but anyway, you know, um, you know, that's just a book, right? You could you can play that on your couch. You could just cuddle up and yeah, read the it's, book. Yeah, it's a book. It's a few newspapers. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little bit of a board, but I don't think... I don't remember if it comes into cases very much other than it tells you which number to look up. Yeah. That's all I can remember. Yeah. Right. But but anything like that or like maybe like Dragon Holt or um, just something that's not just trying to think of things that are that are not so board oriented might work. Yeah, I think that's real time. I think the roll and rights are good. I think, you mm -hmm. know, if you're what you don't want to do when you're going out on a date night, at least maybe Kimberly does, is become <laughs> highly competitive with your date uh so like something that's either a co-op or just independent right like if you're doing a roll and write it's like oh you won because right. you sort you of race to the end board. faster yeah, yeah. Right? you yeah. don't want a game that's necessarily like a real take that sort of and thing. then you get that you get that oh you know who's sleeping on the couch tonight story you know? <laughs> it's just i don't think it really sets the tone for no, a nice date night it doesn't it's not that couples can't play competitive games but if you're going to take okay. the time to go to a restaurant and have a night together for me i wouldn't yes. want to be like you know, take that. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was me when I was in in uh, uh, in Oregon a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Jason and his wife, <laughs> they oh, were the yeah. worst. <laughs> I mean, that's fair, Sonia. It's okay, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've it's seen fun. Jason and Sonia try to kill each other in games before too. Right. Yeah, but you know, mm -hmm. not on date night, right? You might want to might want to scale it back a little bit on on date night. So. Yeah, I mean, there's a time and a place for, you know, like, you know, <laughs> game pairings. Yes. Right. What game pairs well, with a nice. Uh... Hey, speaking of cooking and games, another one we did 
was herbaceous. So uh, so I actually got herbaceous the Kickstarter preview, and and uh, my wife is a gardener, and she does all. I don't garden, so she does all my herbs for me out on the on the the porch just outside of our kitchen dining room area, and then I cook, which is a great a great uh, mat pairing there for us. So yeah, I go out there. with my little scissors and I clip off some ro uh, rosemary or some thyme or some parsley or whatever, and then I bring that in the kitchen and then I cook something with it. So um, we did this whole photo thing when I was doing the review of, I was making sure I could cook something with with one of the herbs and herbaceous and then, and then do a picture of it. And then I was able to talk about the game when I was doing my review with pictures of foods that I had cooked from herbs that are in the game. And um, that's also just a game we really like. It's in my quiver, um, but that's a, that's another good, fun little two player game. Nice. I, you know, I have not played that. Hmm. Every time I see it though, I'm thinking it's a, it's a pot game. I know it's not, <laughs> but something not. about it, everything like herbaceous. I'm like, oh, it's, sure. a, it's a drug game, right? Like, no, no, yeah. no, no, I mean, hey, Patrick, Steve will be, Steve Finn is showing at Granite Game Summit. You could have him oh. sign it. Cindy, yeah. there you go. Yeah, that would work. That would work. She might like that. I don't know if she likes signed things. I don't think she cares. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I need to bring something to make Daniel sign it, just because. That would make him awkward. He's, It'll make him so he's, uncomfortable. He's very uncomfortable by that sort of thing. I plan to make. I Ryan actually, I actually, I life. actually oh. met met Rob too, and I got geeked out by that. I, I get, I sometimes do that. So. Uh, we met at the at the fun employment party oh, at um, the Gen, Gen Con. That's the Gen like Con room. Ten, year, ten years ago? Yeah. No, it wasn't even that long because I was at Hasbro ten years ago. <laughs> I know. I'm just not, yeah, no, I'm, I'm bad. With, I'm bad with dates. Five years ago, though. Four or five, five years, years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah. So you you were there with uh, Matt doing something pre. We pre were that other game. You guys were probably meeting, meeting to talk about some other game. We we're probably play testing Pandemic Legacy season two, given the rough time frame, or maybe you know, season one. Season one. This was before that, because then we met later and did a pre season two thing yeah. at season two thing uh, at BGG. No, but, well, it's interesting. We would, depending on the summer, if it was the summer of 2015, which it might have been, we would have been testing season two three months before season one came out, because we started. Oh, really? We started six months ahead of time. Okay. So. Which we were both very grateful for because we had no idea it would be that successful. And if we hadn't been at least half done when season two came out, we would have totally panicked and not known what to do. <laughs> but the fact that it was half done, we're like, well, let's just finish this thing we have because that's better. Yeah. 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 So wait, Rob, are you the are you one of the designers of Fed Employed? No, I wasn't. I was the publisher of that. So I oh, was. Oh, okay. I um. I think the year before at Gen Con, I, I knew the designer, it's kind of a long story, and he was looking for a new publisher. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into publishing or publish my own stuff or just be a designer. I was like new to being on my own. I'm like, I'll do everything. And I was kind of like trying out the different parts to see which which fit and what I liked. So I said, well, let's just publish it together. I got a company, let's just figure this out. And so it was a lot of like really learning what to do. Um, and then I realized at the time, just by myself, there was a lot to being a publisher that I didn't enjoy. So it was sort of like right. a one and, and then Mattel came and said, do you mind if we pick it up? And I'm like, no, that's fine. And they still have it in, in print. Yeah. Um, and, but it did enable me a couple of years later when Justin Jacobson came and said he wanted to form restoration games. I said, well, actually I, I have some experience. I brought a game to market. Here's all the parts I don't want to do. Can you do those? And he said, yes. And I think he regrets it now. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. Maybe. That's normal. Yeah. What would any major life decision be without a little regret, Rob? <laughs> it's, nothing but, it's nothing but regrets. That's the seasoning of life. Uh, someone said, did you like your time at Hasbro? And my answer is uh, much of it, much of the time, and some of it, not at all. Um, the game industry changed a lot from when I started in 1998 until I left in 2012. The, the mass market game in industry, while the hobby market was going like this, mass market wasn't quite sure what to do. So even though I had the same job for 14 years, the types of games that Hasbro was making became less of and less of a fit for the type of games that I wanted to make mm -hmm. by the end. So every year it was a little bit less of finding some stuff that sort of fit my passion, but I got very good at working on all sorts of games that normally I wouldn't work on and found ways to try to still make them interesting and fun and different and just learned a lot about manufacturing and production and plastics and 
all sorts of things. So, but by the end, it was it was really a couple years. At the end, I'm like, I should probably move on. But it was it's a corporate job with benefits and health insurance and a steady paycheck. Uh, so it took it took the company moving to Rhode Island like a hundred miles from my family before I'm like, okay, that's it, time to go. So, it makes but, sense. But it was time. Yeah. Um. <laughs> my my wife, God love her. She says, "Oh, she comes back from our, our meeting with our financial advisors. You like you like games? I bought a stock in Hasbro." <laughs> I was like, "Okay." It's <laughs> well, as, as a stock purchase, given over the past twenty years, has been it, a very good one. Yeah, it's it's not actually been a bad thing. We've we've yeah. done okay with it, but I don't. No, it's it's a, it's um it's well, Hasbro and Mattel are both toy companies that bought game companies and there's mm -hmm. you know and hasbro has wizards of the coast which is clearly a game company and they have their okay. toys which are all brand driven transformers and gi joe and yeah. star wars then they have the game company which is like not quite nerdy like wizards of the coast but not quite brand driven like toys and so it, it lives in an awkward space because the management there can't quite figure out the current management i think the best way to leverage it we can talk all that. businessy it's tough all right, so before we run out of time, I wanted to talk Castle about Burgundy for two player games. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh. Daniel also said Castles of Burgundy for a two player I've date night. I've heard a lot of people talk about that being a good it, two player it, game. It plays very well at two player, and there's mm -hmm. not much to take that. So if you want like a little bit meatier, and Natter says she plays Viticulture or The Gallerist every Valentine's Day. That's some pretty heavy two player or date night game stuff. I don't know. That's not that. Uh, bad. I heard through a friend that Rob has the perfect easy recipe for Brussels sprouts. Yes, I do. Also, hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. But what is this Brussels sprouts recipe? Yes. Uh, well, the Brussels sprouts recipe I picked up from a magazine called Cooks Illustrated, which I've had a mm -hmm. subscription to for like 15 years. So if you're Me like too. Yeah. kind of interested in cooking but not quite sure, just get this magazine. It's six yeah. times a year. What they do is they do like a two page article of why they put the recipe together, why they didn't. It's like a little mini cooking class. It's like watching mm -hmm. a five minute YouTube on cooking. And then you make the recipe and you're not just sort of blindly making the recipe and not knowing why you're like, oh, I see why each one of these things is in here and why it's right. important. So you not only get a good recipe, almost all of them are good. Some of them miss for me, but you kind of know why. So you learn the ticks, tri tricks and techniques. I almost couldn't get through that. Um, <laughs> Brussels sprouts, you get some fairly large Brussels sprouts. You cut them in half. You put them face down in a 12-inch nonstick skillet with five tablespoons of olive oil. Okay. And you want to put five because See? you want... More fat. Yeah. A fat is flavor. It's delicious. Yes, I know. I'm just re reminding the folks. The, the and then you put that pan on high. I have a gas stove, so I put it not quite on high. Yeah. <laughs> you put a lid on it, and you put it on high for five minutes. And what you're doing is you're cooking the bottom and then you're steaming the top. Mm -hmm. So then after about five minutes, you take the top off, you turn the heat down a little bit and you just let them cook now and get the steam off them for about three or four more minutes. And you get perfectly caramelized Brussels sprouts on the bottom mm -hmm. and nice and tender on the top. And then the olive oil still in the pan and you kind of drizzle that around, put a little salt on it. Don't be afraid of salt. Salt's your friend in mm -hmm. cooking. Salt makes all food taste better until you put too much, and then it makes it taste salty. Yes. yes. <laughs> salt all right, is so, a flavor enhancer. So I mentioned that that my I'm my my primary cook at my house. Other than Brussels sprouts, my wife makes fabulous Brussels sprouts. Hers, she marinates them uh, in like a balsamic and oil and and other stuff. She fries bacon in the pan, okay. takes the bacon out, and then does exactly what you did. She puts them in a layer in the bacon. Mm -hmm. and browns them um, and then puts that bacon and, and the marinated. So it's like a balsamic marinade back in with them. Yeah. And okay. then, um, and then usually kind of like lets them sit for a little while. It's more of a, a warm, not a hot dish. It's a warm dish, but they're yeah. fabulous. It's like the one thing that my son actually requests that's, is that mom makes the Brussels sprouts and dad makes everything else. So. That's that's great. Yeah, you can finish Brussels sprouts a lot of good ways. Bacon always goes well. We sometimes put uh, Parmesan cheese goes well. Nuts, almonds, mm -hmm. uh, craisins actually mm -hmm. go very well with it. A little lemon juice, a little acid. I make uh, a shredded Brussels sprout salad with craisins. Oh, yeah. I've seen those at the store. I've never actually shaved them. Yeah. Brussels I, do, I you use like a little, like a man's razor or a women's razor? <laughs> that's it. You're out. 
<laughs> you're out puns. <laughs> no, I, you're running the show. Please don't log uh, off. Okay. I almost, learn this almost made way. it through the show without a pun. Uh, oh, before we, before we move on to rapid fire, I wanted to hear about an announcement we just heard on, on ship shape. Ship shape. Yes. yes. So Calliope Games sent us out an email today about a game called Ship Shape. You, you remember that? I do remember that. That is part of the Titans of Gaming series, which oh. I was part of, where they had 12 designers make 12 games. I think my game is oh. number 12. Okay. It was a little by request. I was like, uh, I don't have an idea yet. Put me near the end of the line. <laughs> um, although and then I got an idea, and I finished it early, and I gave it to him like over two years ago. But it is a tricky game to manufacture, so I think it took him a little while to do it. It's a very different game for me. There. It is uh, about a 20-minute game. It's played in three rounds. And all you do in a round is there's a stack of tiles in the middle, which is uh, like a three-by-three three grid of, like, you're going to build your ship. So it's like a little tic-tac-toe board. But the okay. thing is that most of the tile is punched out. There's only three squares on each one. So there's, like, different combinations oh. of tiles. And so when they're in a stack, you can kind of see what's coming by looking down. And more interestingly, if you're on different sides of the table, everyone can kind of see different things of what's coming. Oh, so because of the angle. And all you do is you play mm -hmm. a card face down. You turn it over. The highest card takes the top tile. The second one takes the second. Whether you wanted to or not, you're not <laughs> voting for, like, bid order. You're voting. For, you're trying to guess what people are going to do. And then you put it on your ship, and you are going to stack three tiles on top of each other, but you want to orient them so that you're hiding the rats that are on the ship and maximizing your gold. And, and there's three different, there's contraband cannons and gold, and there's different ways that you want to minimize and maximize all of them. And then you look around and see who built the best ship. And you do that three times. And whoever has the most money wins the game. But what makes it interesting is this little Tetris stacking sort of puzzle. And it's also particularly funny if two people play the same valued card, they bounce. Everyone else takes their tiles and then they rebid. So you might play like two people or three people play their nines. Once someone plays a one, the person who plays the one gets it first, even though they didn't want it. And hilarity ensues. <laughs> so Netters asked, when's that coming out? I don't, uh, I'm not sure when it's said in the announcement. Uh, my guess, I am down at New York Toy Fair this weekend, and I'm going to talk to them more about it. I, it's going to be this spring sometime if they're sending out emails. And I saw a prototype at PAX Unplug, and I was actually playing it a little bit at their booth at Gen Con last year. Uh, but the fact that this, the tiles themselves are like quarter-inch thick foam core. So when you stack the tiles on the board, it's like the size of a Jenga tower. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Like if You need to stack them enough to have some presence. So I think that... They got that all figured out and they're probably on a boat now is my guess. Okay. It's funny. I, I looked it up. Uh, I, w I went to look it up on, on board game geek and there's an, there's an old game called ship shape from Mattel. Yeah. Um, mine is two words. There's this yeah. one word, oh, totally okay. different game. Yes. They we have the to... big Make Mac. Sure so the fact that that game name exists already. Okay, that's here it is. Here's the two word <laughs> version. Ship shape. Yes. It's, it's the two words. Cause it's, twice as good as the original. I haven't played the original. It might be a perfectly fine game. It, it looked weird, it, you know, to whatever. Uh, yes, everyone has the same cards, but everyone has the cards one through nine, and there's only nine bidding rounds, so you'll use each card once unless you bounce, at which point you have to play a second card, and you'll get your, uh, your full hand back towards the end of the game, which is a little bit of a catch-up feature because it means you didn't get the bid that you expected or wanted, but at least at the end of the game, you have your full hand back. Cool. Hey, speaking of of titans of industry, I I was just working on a particular list, and the game Titan came to mind. Um, that would that would be perfect for restoration games. Did you ever play Titan nineteen eighty? I Avalon I, Hill. I have not played it. I have seen it played. I have talked to people who played it. I believe okay. one of the issues, which there's a couple things against Titan. One, the inventor disappeared. Okay. And may have passed away. Oh. It, the, the rights are a little bit muddy. Okay. Both whether Avalon Hill still owns them or whether this person owns them and if they can be found. And I also remember it being 
a very long game. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and not that we couldn't do our job and restore it and bring it back, but if it is extremely long and we're trying to get it down to a reasonable play hour for today's market, it might be a bridge too far. So yeah, it is. It is come up a few times. We do have a you go to the Restoration Games website. We ask people to submit things, mm -hmm. and we, so we have our. Top tier and second tier. This is not neither one of those. Like second no. tier are things that have dozens of game. Top tier is hundreds or if not thousands. And then the other ones are like the strays, like five yeah. tiers, six tiers. It's yeah. in there, but it's down lower, which doesn't mean we don't mind those. Sometimes I look and go, hey, I just like that game. Let's try to get that one. <laughs> well, Bill, Bill just said it, which he hates it. So it's, well, it, Bill hates that, it. Yeah, then it's got to be good. Um, that, that seems like all the reason to vote it in for sure. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the Omega virus. So. Yeah. Yeah, we'll that see. one is that we'll one see. gets that one gets a top tier request. There's a few that um, are top tier requests. A lot of yeah. them lead back to Hasbro, and it's there's, hard to work with that there's stuff. Crystal. There. She just said that too. Yeah. <laughs> she said, "I'm going to wait to ask her that once or twice a year." Oh no, there's certain things that people ask us about. They ask us about Thunder Road, uh, Hero Ooh. Quest, uh, oh, Omega oh, virus, um, Chopper. Uh, chopper, chopper strike chopper strike my friend has that on his shelf i just saw it and like two others that i can't think of right now but those well, are the ones doing, bill just said dark tower but you guys are doing dark tower we're doing dark tower yeah return okay. to dark tower yeah <laughs> that's what started my day that was my first meeting this morning 15 hours ago was on I'm so dark tower. all i want is up and over that's oh i saw that i saw you i, I yeah, don't I was... know i don't know up and over it's like this knip up sort of flip flopping thing Gosh, okay. I'm really dating me. <laughs> yeah, no, I like giving up right there. I gotta tell you, after Fireball Island and Dark Tower, I could use a break from games that involve extensive amounts of either vacuum form plastic or electronics or something else. And it's funny, a lot of these games that people are asking were games that were put out by Parker Brothers and Milton Bradley yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. all these things that all were right. toy companies that knew how to do this. And I'm like, I kind of know how to do this. So seriously, a um, beautiful piece of plastic with balls on strings. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's hilarious. Um, no, no, uh, I have. A, I should go. I should go vote for it. But I discovered a game. My my friend Carl does a thing called KitchCon where he brings out old games. Carl's uh, best, yeah. And um, I went to my first one this year, and we brought out our old, weird old classic <laughs> games. And and I discovered. Uh, Shoot, where is it? It's the um, Magnificent Race, and it has this um, roulette wheel thing in it. And I'm actually going to bring it to Granite Game Summit. I'm putting it in my suitcase to bring it. And I told Kimberly, we're not doing it as an official event, but I'm bringing and encouraging people to bring and have a pile of kitsch games well, at that Granite Game Summit. The Early Risers Club, too, yeah. though. Yes, so I, we have I, that early riser cereal bar situation yes. in the cartoons now for right. Saturday and Sunday early morning. So I think in, in my pile is the Magnificent Race, Nuclear War, the Omega Virus, and something else. I can't see what the other one is. Probably the Inventors. Um, I'm not now sure. We, we just need Rob to donate something from Restoration. You guys, <laughs> it's got to be something old, like, like the uh, original. I there maybe we go. I'll, oh, okay. Maybe I'll bring. Uh, maybe I'll no, if if I if I make it there, I will bring a, I will bring a goodie bag of, of things okay. to drop off. But so, but no, seriously, that's 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 been my thing recently. I'm kind of going through this. Um, going through another, it's fun to find this old stuff, yeah. and it's sometimes fun to think of like how can we make this better, or what's the part that's yeah. really. Yeah. I I, uh, I I was playing some games last year, and there was a game from the '50s that still had some like really cool mechanical like gadgets and gimmicks mm -hmm. to it. But like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not sure we could really build an interesting game around it. Like the bar for what people were entertained by was it's so true. much lower in 1958, <laughs> right? It's, it's like, wow, just a little bit. Like, well, we've got a 10 inch TV. It's still black and white, but. Uh. Yeah. We played All right. Island at our um, come and play day that we hosted Granite Game Summit at our friendly local game store. And they sold copies because we had it out on the table playing it. Oh, sure. Uh, got, some, got some table presents. They sold the rest. It does. Yeah. It <laughs> does. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. They had Fireball up in, in, in Portland when I was up there at the. At Diversions. Yeah. And no, this was the other Portland. Oh, Portland, Oregon. No, Portland, right. Oregon. They had it at the cafe. Well, I Portland, went to. Maine is so great. It's the where's where I was born. Okay. Um, but the so version we're talking is about too. Billabong. They're very excited about it. Yes. W what is Billabong? Oh my gosh. Billabong is an SDJ oh winner, yes. actually, from gosh, 78. I can't remember for certain. I'll look it up. It's such a great game, Rob. 
It's okay. checkers with a racing. It's like racing checkers, for lack of a better term. Yes. Um, okay. But it's also got that bounce mechanism. Yeah. Imagine a checkerboard with with a square in the middle, and your checkers are kind of racing around that square, and they're bouncing over each other because they're kangaroos, yeah. which is the billabong thing. Um, uh, hey, Bill Curry, that, it was lie detector. That was the game I was talking about. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, it's it's only from 95. Gosh, it seemed like it was older. It's than only that. from 95, Billabong. I didn't. Wow. It's so good. Though. Yeah. Or <laughs> what I say is three years before I started in this industry. Thanks for <laughs> aging me right up to retirement age. Maybe that's. And I was actually wondering when the first uh, SDJ was Tortoise and Hare, and I thought it was like 78 or 79. Okay. So I was. Yeah, it's, that out. it's such this. It's such a simple game, but I, I'm, you know, I love those kinds of games where you, it, there's it's so a much really more to well it game. than what yeah. it looks like. Oh, definitely. Yeah. All right. Some, all right. Every once in a while, we'd get a big pile of old like mildewy games and, you know, dig yep. through them for a day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, That's there we fun. go. Daniel. Daniel has a better description of it in the chat. How it works too. Uh, if you're five away from someone, you can jump five ahead of them. Yeah, it's got just a really great mechanism with the bouncing. And it's one that I play every year at BGG Con because it's in the library. So, I will take a look at it. I don't know if 95 is old enough. Is that old enough? <laughs> yeah, 15 years. 15 like years. Oh, 15 okay. years out of print is our rule of thumb, which puts anything from 2004 on the list and actually by the time it comes out it puts everything from like 2005 or 2006 on the list now that's wow. insane okay for some reason i thought it was 25 plus years i mean it's our rule of thumb but right. yeah. in our mind it has to be uh, out of print at least 15 years it, it they tend to be a little older but not always and there needs to be some reason to bring it back and some reason to change it underwear older bit. than that i mean jeez uh, you it's time for new underwear i mean that's really no other way to say that <laughs> 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 I think that's an accurate description. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so do we have anything we missed? Oh, okay. We just, we right. uh, are we ready for? Are we ready for rapid fire? But I'm not sure. sure I am. I'm trying to stay hydrated. <laughs> okay. Someone was concerned about this bottle that I need to clean them. But yes, this I I, I I put these in the dishwasher every night. I got like ten of them. Okay. So, yeah, I do too. All right. So the rules of rapid fire are quite simple. There are going to be five questions. You cannot repeat the question in an effort to, you know, gain time or say, um, or I ah. just, the first thing that comes to your mind, you're going to repeat back to me. Okay. I'm going to be very, very bad at this. You may not use the same answer twice. All right. So I'm going to give you five answers as fast as possible. Not the yeah. same answer twice. The trick is to be fast, yes. not coherent. Yeah, that's about it. And just So don't... my answer literally can make no sense. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to try. You could try. You could try. You can do it. You've got this. People have done horribly, so. Yes. I can do that. All right. So because because you're a chef, because you're wearing a chef, all of these start off, you know, I've, I've, I've set these up as courses. So the, first, the first course is our amuse-bouche. Mm -hmm. What is, could you come up with a game that you could play in bed with a friend? Uh, sex. <laughs> yes. And for an appetizer course, could you name a game with food in it? Uh, edible chess. I've seen it. <laughs> what, they're made out of chocolate. Sure, why not? For our Auntie Posse course, could you name a game with the colors red, white, or green in it? Uh, no. Um... <laughs> That's the color of the Italian flag. Yeah, it's the color of the Italian flag. I'm like any <laughs> any sort of pizza game. I was trying to think any sort of Italian restaurant game. Um, uh, yes. Uh, downforce. I'm okay. sure we have those yeah, colors sure. in there. That color in there. Uh, for our main course, could you name a game that maybe you could have spent a little bit more time in the oven? Uh, that I've done? Sure. Seafall. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> and for our dessert course, could you name your favorite dessert? Uh, sticky toffee pudding. Wonderful. Very good. That's your. <laughs> that was your <laughs> that was your rapid fire. Okay. I wasn't sure where he was going after so... sex and then edible for the next one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh oh, here we go. I'm not really sure. Uh, you guys dirtied it up. I didn't do anything. You told me to say the first thing that came into my mind. Unfortunately, 
You said game for two people to play in bed. I yeah. mean, yes, yes, you're right. I could have said Twister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Naked Twister is basically the same thing. Yeah, right, right hand red. Right. So, Rob, if people wanted to get a hold of you in some other way, some way, <laughs> I don't think anyone does at this point. But yes, <laughs> learn, learn more about cooking. How would they do that? <laughs> Uh, you could follow me on Twitter is usually the best way. It's at Rob Davio and it's D-A-V-I-A-U. Awesome. Um, you can go to my website and you can find my email address there. And then you can email me and I often get back to you if it's a short and polite email. <laughs> nice. I sometimes get manifestos from people like here is four pages of how I would have changed the game that you designed. <laughs> sometimes I read them. I don't usually respond. I'm like, well, I, it's I done. There's good. nothing I can do now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Where were you four years ago? <laughs> <laughs> and Kimberly, how about you? Uh, yes, I am. This is, I also am not good at this at KJ Revia on Twitter and Instagram. Cool. And also, Ran a game summit. I thought you were pointing to something. I um, mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't even think you can see the Granite Game Summit, but I give up. Yeah, that's a lot of just. Granite Game Summit is yeah, March is 8th summit. weekend. It is March 8th through the 10th of this year. Tickets are nearing sell are, blah, are nearly sold out. So make sure to get your badge while you can. Nice. And I'm Patrick Hillier. You can reach me on Twitter at Over the Hillier. And of course, the Cubist is a member of Punchboard Media. Where we all, where we all bring something to the table. table. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob, for joining us. Thank you. I'm stopping the broadcast. Bye. Bye.